Monkeypox, adenovirus, COVID, the flu. If only we knew an infectious disease epidemiologist to help us out in today's case at Q&A. Well, you know, you know what? We might have one. We do. Sharice Rora Allegrini is our local expert epidemiologist. She's, of course, the CEO with the San Antonio AIDS Foundation. Sharice, appreciate you joining us. Uh, obviously, in just the last few days, we're talking about three different confirmed cases of monkeypox. What do you take away from that? What should we as the public take away from that? Well, we knew it was coming. We saw it uh, in New York. We saw it in a number of other cities and across Texas already. So it was just a matter of when we would see some cases here. Um, it is concerning, and we want to make sure that people are aware. They know what to look for. They're taking precautions. Uh, it's not highly transmissible like COVID, so it's not a it's not a risk to everybody. It's just we need to be conscientious if you're in an environment that poses a higher risk. One of the things that we know about the three cases that we have here is at least some of them were the result of a group that went to a music festival in the Dallas area. So I guess the warning is about the type of places you're going to go and what you're going to do when you're there. Exactly. So um, it's transmitted through skin to skin contact or very, very close respiratory contact. So um, it's not like you're in one room and you're all gonna get it, but if you rub up skin uh, with somebody else that has a, a sore, then there's a good chance that you'll get it. So you wanna be conscientious, you know, this is summertime. We're, we're uh, in crowded places, we're wearing tank tops, wearing shorts. Uh, we might go dancing and dancing at a music festival. That's going to happen. We're going to be in very close contact with others. So being conscientious of that, it doesn't mean you can't go to a music festival, but you're going to want to stay outside. You're going to want to uh, create a little distance between you and some others. Um, don't rub skin to skin with all the folks around you, which, you know, it's hard not to do that. Um, but being conscientious might help you prevent getting infected. How concerned are you about stigmatizing or, you know, kind of... Uh making someone other than in this whole thing uh, when we talk about monkeypox. That is a huge, huge problem. You know, we still have stigma related to HIV, and, and this is my world. Um, this is a community we work very closely with. HIV is not limited to the gay community. Um, anybody can get it. Um, Monkeypox is not a sexually transmitted infection, um, but it does happen that we've seen it mostly in the LGBTQ community, in part because this is just a group of people who are very supportive of each other, do things together. It's a, a culture where you interact and, and um, you, you're more likely to interact with people like yourselves. Um, and so that's why we've seen it spread um, in this community. Um, and it's so important that we recognize that anybody can potentially get it. Um, there's no Nothing that um, is unique about the gay population. It just happened to be that's where it started. So we've got to be very respectful and understand um, and, and communicate. And that's something, honestly, that the gay community did so well in the early days of HIV was educate and inform and not be silent and work to remove the stigma. And that's the same thing that we need to do with monkeypox. If I were to tell someone, go to this website and read up on it because that education is so important right now. This is a kind of a, a new chapter in our, our health lives. I would say perhaps the CDC website has got some great information on what it is, what it looks like and how to avoid it. Absolutely, the CDC website is very good. Um, on I, there's a, an epidemiologist I follow who's just brilliant uh, called Your Local Epidemiologist. She writes wonderful um, information that's very easy to digest. Um, so I would follow her for everything. Um, but the CDC, of course, um, CDC has clinical information. It has photos. It really lets you understand what you're looking for. I, I have a, a, a complicated, simple question for you, Sharice. So, so we're talking about BA5 right now when we talk about COVID as we're switching, as we're switching here. Right. The vaccines hit BA1 and BA2. And so my question, really the simple question is, are we having trouble with our vaccines keeping up with the different variations right now of COVID? I, I wouldn't say we're having trouble, you know, yes and no. We're always going to be chasing uh, with our vaccine. The, imagine a vaccine running around trying to catch the, the virus and get in front of it. And it's difficult to completely get in front of a virus that's constantly evolving. That said, our vaccines are actually working really well. Um, we're used to vaccines preventing us from getting any infection. And unfortunately, that's not the case with COVID, but it is minimizing the infection. One of the reasons we're seeing new cases pop up and reinfection occurring is because that 
uh, virus is evolving to become less severe. And, and part of that means it's more transmissible because we're healthier when we're infected. And so we don't stop doing our daily activities. We're going out and about. The vaccines are contributing to that in the sense that they're making us healthier. They're keeping us from getting very sick. Um, so it's a little bit of a catch 22, but it absolutely means that the vaccines are working pretty well and there'll be new vaccines on the horizon that will work even better. With this recent spike worldwide in the United States and here in San Antonio, do you see us going back to mandatory masking soon? I strongly recommend we mask in any kind of public space. I don't think in Texas we'll have mandatory masking because I don't think there's the political will to do that. But I, you know, in my my office, we we work in the immunized immunocompromised population. We've never stopped masking. And I know that I got kind of relaxed. I went to the grocery store without a mask for a few times, but my 16 year old never took her mask off in public. <laughs> she was wearing it all along. And so looking at her, I thought, okay, I'll put my mask back on. And now I, now I do. So what we're doing is really strongly recommending when you're in a public space, wear your mask, um, obviously, you're not going to wear it at home, but be very conscientious even when you're gathering with friends to keep that mask on. I was in a meeting with 10 people the other day and only two of us had masks. And I'm really glad I did because I learned of COVID a couple days later, a COVID exposure. So keep the mask on. Um, I don't think we're going to see it mandatory, but we really strongly encourage it. Do you think that we're going to basically look at the vaccine when it comes to COVID like we look at the flu vaccine that, that you know, it's for a strain. It'll help that strain and help you with other strains things like that. And how unusual is it that we're still seeing flu cases and adenovirus cases at this time of year? So I'll uh, answer the last part first. So adenovirus cases this time of year, that's not too unusual. We see that. Um, we don't really hear much about it because we're not usually following diseases that closely in the general public. So the epidemiologists know about it, but the general public had never really paid attention. So that's not uncommon. Flu is uncommon at this time of year. And I really think that it's because we've done such a good job at keeping flu at bay. The last two years, we've seen very little flu during the typical flu seasons. And until we started taking our mask off this year. And now, you know, the flu still circulates all year, um, but at, typically at very low levels. Um, so we're just seeing it a little bit more than usual. And I think that's because we had precautions before and we don't have precautions now. Um, regarding um, COVID, darn, now I forgot the first part of your question. That's all right. I just wondered if the back COVID vaccine is going to be like the flu vaccine, where right. it. Where right. it Yes, um, and pretty much it will be. It's a different virus. It's a different kind of vaccine. There's a different reason why we're having to make new vaccines, but we can expect that we're going to have to get revaccinated for a number of years until things finally settle down. Thank you so much for joining us, Sharice War Allegrini. You are such a, a, a breath of fresh air. I love hearing what you have to say. It kind of cuts through the cuts See, to the chase. We have questions. She has answers. That's how it works. Sharice, always appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. We'll be right back.